Hello, thank you for clicking on this video. This is another commission that I've had this year from a really cool group of, of friends, I think, that live across the United States. The first person who I did a series of illustrations for live in New York City. Her and her husband like collect stuffed animals and they give them names and careers and personalities and, you know, don't hate. I collected stuffed animals for a really long time. I kept some so long that my they are now my daughters. I illustrated a handful of the stuffed animals that they have, um, and I'll pop in some of uh, samples of that. Not only have I illustrated stuff for this one couple, they they knew a couple that were getting married, so they wanted an illustration as a wedding gift. I illustrated that couple's dog in a vineyard. I'll pop that up. And now that couple who were friends of the first couple I illustrated stuff for, this new couple with the beagle in the vineyard, they know a couple that's getting married and they want a commission of, oh, look, <laughs> speaking of dogs, they want me to commission a painting of their dog, Rudy, who is obsessed with tennis balls. And the couple met while they were working in the Obama administration, they met in the Capitol building. So the Capitol building is gonna be in the background. I wanted to show you sort of my process of how I start. So here I have printouts of the Capitol building. So I'm just gonna sketch that and just block that in and I'm gonna do the details a little bit later. But I definitely want to get the architecture of, of the Capitol building done in sort of a loose way, but obviously when you're, when you're drawing architecture, even if it's in a doodle form or just really sketchy, loose drawing, um, it still needs to be distinctive so that people know what it is, right? Uh, and then there's a little statue. And I, I don't remember because I haven't been to DC in a super long time. I don't remember if this is the front of the Capitol or the back where the that um, waiting pool is. But that's the side we're gonna paint because Rudy is, in my head, I see Rudy sort of bounding through the water to catch all these tennis balls. So that's why we have that water in the front. Uh, and then we're just gonna block in where some of those trees are gonna go. And my lighting changes a little bit. I use window light for the most part. Oh, and there's Rudy. So now that I have the basics of where the Capitol building is gonna go, here's our Rudy. Uh, I'm gonna have him right next to the main focal point of the Capitol building. So I'll block him in. And I, I say him, I don't know if Rudy is a female or male. And it's gonna take me a couple tries to get the angle of Rudy right. Right now the nose is, is sort of straight on and I'm gonna change that eventually. Here we go and make one side a little bit bigger than the other, just so you know it's at an angle. We gotta fit, we gotta, we gotta fit a tennis ball in there. So I'm envisioning Rudy sort of mid air. They've jumped up in the air and are sort of twisting their back to be able to catch this tennis ball. So you'll see once I get the rest of the body in there. So yeah, <laughs> that nose needed to be a lot bigger. And I think I, I went with a longer tongue just for the comedy of it. <laughs> um, but later on in the video, you'll see. Uh, 
but later on later on in the video you'll see where I incorporate edits from the person commissioning the illustration that they wanted a shorter tone. I've got some edit. I'm sitting at my painting desk now and I'm gonna make edits to Rudy. I got some feedback from the person commissioning the illustration. I think mostly to get the likeness of the dog a little bit better just because I was working with two photos and it's not exactly the position the dog was in in the photos is not the position they're in in the illustration. So I'm gonna narrow some things, make the tongue a little bit shorter. Okay, so here I am making that tongue a little bit shorter. Putting a little extra spit <laughs> coming off of that tongue. And there we go, we make the muzzle a little bit narrower. Here I'm pointing out some of the colors of Rudy and where, she, where the dog needs to be a little bit furrier in the neck. Okay, and now we're going to start. I'm wetting the paper first before I put any color down just because it's the sky and the clouds. I want to have like a fluffy feel. So I'm just going to go ahead and wet the areas so that the color really blends in and bleeds into the paper. Here we go with the color. And then I want that color reflected in the pool that Rudy's jumping in. And then I let that dry overnight. And then I'll, so this is the next day. So I'm gonna start coming in with all the, not all, of this. so I'm gonna start coming in with the details that I want in the Capitol building. Try to make it symmetrical as possible, but since I'm not using rulers or anything, we can, you can get away with a lot if you just say, mm, I'm just making a loose sketch. Arches, arches, arches. And I'm really not putting any detail into the statues. I'm just trying to make them look like sort of human figures. But moving on real quick.
So the capital building is done. And then we can start mixing some color. Putting a base coat of Rudy down. She is a she he. Rudy is a ginger pup. So we're gonna start with a pretty bright orange that will get dulled down a little bit with once we put shadows. Go light first when you're doing watercolor. Light first, and then you can darken it up. But you can't lighten it. So don't start with super dark. And then we got some greens for the trees and the grass. One, one tip I think I can give for making really realistic looking grasses and trees is just use a ton of different kinds of green that will make it look realistic. There are so, so, so many shades of green out there that the more you vary it up in your paintings, the more, one, the more interesting your painting's gonna look just because of all those different colors, um, but it's just gonna look more realistic. And now we're gonna fill in all those tennis balls And all those tennis balls will get a little bit more detailed. They'll have a, a little bit of a shadow and a highlight eventually. Um, but since there's so many of them, and I don't want I don't want the tennis balls to be the focal point. I want Rudy and the Capitol building. So the tennis balls will stay pretty simple. And then I consciously chose to not put people walking around, around the Capitol. Just because the, the, well, the picture I was working from did have people, but with all those tennis balls flying around, I didn't think people would actually be walking around the Capitol in, a, in the middle of a tennis ball storm. That and you want, you know, like I said before, I want Rudy and the Capitol building to be the focal points, not not tiny little people walking around in the background. And here I'm just going in with a really dark color for the eyes and those little, the little dark areas around the eyes. Pulling out some of the detail on the, pulling out some of the detail. Pulling out some of the detail on with Rudy's fur. Put some detail in the water. And this is after I've let it dry completely overnight. So I'm coming in and erasing a lot of my pencil lines. Um, where you have painted with watercolor, if you've painted on top of pencil lines with watercolor, those markings aren't really gonna go away. Uh, and part of my style is to leave quite a bit of pencil marks. Um, but the pencil marks on areas that I haven't painted, I'm gonna get rid of those and just reinforce some of those lines with, with watercolor if I've lost any of the, that detail. And then 
here we are, we're putting a little bit of shadow on each one of these tennis balls, but not too much. And we're just reinforcing some shadows on the building painting in those splashes of water. giving Rudy a little bit more texture. deeper shadows. I mean, it's a bright sunny day, so Rudy's gonna have a lot more contrast than how he started. And then I'm going in and trying to shape the clouds a little bit better. Especially around, so part of the commission was to write the bride and groom's name in the clouds. And this is gonna take a, a couple of layers. This is sort of the first one where I'm trying to shape the clouds into their names and the date that they're getting married. And then just generally trying to shape the clouds. So this is dried overnight again. I'm gonna put a bit more shadow on Ruby. And we wait overnight to do this because if I tried to do this and the paper was even a little bit wet, I would lose some of those brush strokes. And then here we're going in and just making the trees a little bit more detailed. Again, using multiple different kinds of green. I don't know if it's, if you can see all the different kinds of green in this video, but in real life, there's probably a couple dozen shades of green. Uh, and then here I'm coming in with pin. This is sort of one of, this is one of my signature moves, I guess, is I, I do the pencil drawing and then I do the watercolor and then I come back and reinforce with and I, I tried to, at least with this one, I tried to only use the pen and ink on the shadow side while leaving the highlights un, unoutlined just so that it has more of a glowy effect. If I outlined it, it would, it would lose that. Uh, and then here I'm outlining all the tennis balls. And then I'm coming back and outlining Capitol building. And I'm only doing this also after everything's completely dry. You are not going to get sharp clean 
pin lines if your paper is wet at all. apologize for covering up, covering up like half the painting sometimes I have to get really really close to what I'm drawing I think at this point my hands a little numb <laughs> so if you see me stop for a second I'm probably shaking my hand a little bit to get some blood flowing all right so now we're coming back in with white acrylic paint mostly because white watercolor <laughs> doesn't really work <laughs> so we're coming back in with acrylic to reinforce some of these clouds and of course the name and the date of the married couple and their wedding date so after this coat of acrylic dries, we're gonna come back in with a little bit more blue watercolor to create shadows on these clouds so that it's a little bit easier to read. Oh yeah, we're doing some highlights on Rudy's nose as well and highlights on the tennis balls with the, with the white acrylic paint. And of course, some highlights on the water. And then yeah, I made a little bit more dimension to the tennis balls that are close, that are close to the viewer. this dry overnight again. So here I am making a darkish blue and coming in and making shadows on those clouds with the words. And that 2021 is a little hard to read but another layer of blue on the water down there and now we're signing we are all done and then we untape and be careful especially if your paper's still wet I would don't don't take your tape off when your paper's still wet here we go so that was super fun I love um, doing these pet portraits for people and specifically this like one group <laughs> of married folks that keep keep commissioning me I'm, I'm all for it keep commissioning me um there's a lot of dogs and i sort of feel bad i haven't made a portrait of my dog <laughs> he is getting illustrated into a children's book though so the cartoon version of him is being put is being um, made into art so Thank you so much for the folks who commissioned this. Congratulations to Aaron and Joe. I hope you had a wonderful wedding. <laughs>